so today we'll uh, today we'll start with basic operators uh, today we'll have a very very simple and basic class so we'll start with all the arithmetic operators just like a simple calculator you can use your r to graphing for performing any kind of simple calculation uh, arithmetic calculation addition subtraction multiplication division all right so i'll take a few examples over here basic examples arithmetic operations and we can perform all the basic arithmetic operations which are there my screen is visible right it's fine 2 plus 6 normal 2 plus 6 control enter 8 right addition subtraction multiplication for multiplication we use star for division we use forward slash then we have um to the power suppose 3 to the power 6 so 3 to the power 6 right another way another way of doing this another way of doing it doing this is 3 uh double star mark to the power 6 okay so this will give us the same answer so these are basic arithmetic operations which we can perform in r programming using basic arithmetic operators clear basic now the next thing now the next thing that we can perform is the logical and rational operators logical and i want all of you all to type it with me rational operators so basically first what is logical or what is rational operator and when do we use these operators so anything anywhere where you get just two answers true or false is a logical operation the answer will always be true or false it cannot be something in between so it is known as a logical operation and what are logical operators so there are different logical operators like and or okay so these are logical operators what are logical outputs true or false and what are logical operators or and so let's take a few examples let's take a few examples over here for example 4 less than 8 this is false this is false right the statement is false so here this less than sign here this less than sign is a logical operator so what are the different logical operators <coughs> less than greater than for equal to we just don't write equal to we have to use double equal to sign all right greater than equal to less than equal to and so on so these are different logical operators which you can use now when i run this you will get the answer as true right four is less than eight if you are writing six is greater than eight you will get the answer as false you can also use greater than equal to less than equal to if i am writing four is equal to five four is equal to six to see what what answer i will get it will say that is an invalid assignment why because when you want to equate you will have to use double equal to sign when you want to equate any two different things you have to use a double equal to sign you cannot use just one equal to because one equal to means that you are assigning the value of 6 to 4 which is not possible so we have to always use double equal to this will give us false this will give us false similarly to uh, similarly for uh, not equal to we write exclamation mark we write exclamation mark and equal to this is not equal to this is not equal to this is not equal to all right for example if i write that 5 is not equal to 7 this is true 5 is not equal to 7 so my answer should be my answer should be and this should go down Similarly, for example, I am 
writing this expression to C. So this statement means this just what I have selected the region which I have selected. If you just select a particular region of your code and just hit Control Enter, then the only that portion of the entire code will run. See, the entire code is not running. The portion which I have selected only that code will run. If you select a portion and just hit run. Alright, so here the answer is true. It is greater than zero. Not true will give us false. So if you run this entire command, it will give us false. Clear? 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 Now, uh, in our programming, how do we use and all? Like in Excel, we have and all functions. Similarly, in our programming also, we have and all functions. Instead of functions, we have operators. <coughs> right? So, over here, if I say that 8 is greater than 7, or, or 9 is less than 5. So I have two set of holes and here I have used a pipe operator. This is also known as a pipe operator because the symbol is known as a pipe symbol. Or generally this is, this stands for all. Right? This stands for all. So here this statement is true. This statement is false. True or false will always give us true. True or when you run this entire line, it will give us true. True or false. So if you have more than one statement and you are combining these statements with an or operator, even if one any one statement is true, the final answer will be true. Clear? The final answer will always be Alright. Similarly, suppose if I write this, if I take this as eight less than seven. So this is also false, this is also false. False or false will definitely give us false. In case of or operator, if when you combine different multiple sentences together, commands together, any one statement, if it is if any one statement is true, the final output will be here. Here the final output will be. So we have this now. So if basically in this case, what do we say? That what do we say that any one operation should be true? Any one operation should be true. Now let's do it for and. So for and simple we use ampersand. This is ampersand, this is also known as encoding language, we call this as ampersand symbol. Right? This is the and symbol. Now I am using the same kind of command. Just that I will use it with and. I will use it with and. So this is true, this is false. True and false will give me false. True and false will give me false. So basically in order to get true, all your commands should be true when you are using and. Right? When you are using and of it. So here and here all the operations should be here all the operations should be all the operations should be isn't clear and or greater than less than all the different logical operators so this is not rational actually Alright. Alright. Now the next thing that we will do 
What is variable and what is a constant? A constant is something which will not change. A variable is something which can change. The values of a variable can change with time or with dimension, anything, right? So here, let's define different variables and let us understand how in our programming we actually type a particular variable. So there are different types of variable that we will be doing. Different types of variables that we will be doing. So here, the first one is numeric. The first one is numeric. Now for example, it's x. So we, if, if you want to assign a particular value in a variable, there are a few naming conventions that we follow. Naming conventions, what are the naming conventions? Just listen to this very carefully. Uh, you cannot use numbers. The starting, the starting point, the starting of any variable cannot be a number. For example, I write 5x and I will be defining 5x as 6. So this is this is not a way of you know, putting a value to a particular number or a particular variable. No. We never start a variable with a value or a number, right? We never do that. You always start with a letter. Right? And as you move ahead, in CS1, you will not face many issues, but in CS2, when we use lots of variables, so we follow some naming conventions. For example, I uh, want to assign, so there are height of boys and girls, right? So, height of boys, height of girls. So, I, I can define it this way, height, and maybe for girls, I'm using just G, or maybe just F as a female, or maybe I'm writing girls. So, what I'm doing is, see, I'm capitalizing the second word. This is just a naming convention which we follow in all the programming languages. Not only in our programming, if you're doing Python or any other programming language, you generally use these kind of naming conventions. Then we just, you know, if we have two, three letters in a single word, we want to assign any particular value to a single word, single variable, then we capitalize these words, right? Also, if you don't want to capitalize, you can also use colon or maybe underscore, right? Generally, underscore is, makes your word very big, so we use capital G, right? This is what we do. You cannot use space in between. If you want to assign a particular value to this, you will not be able to do so, right? So we cannot use a space. This is about the naming convention. Now, how to assign a value? How to assign a value in our program? We use assignment operator. We use assignment operator. So assignment operator is less than minus. This is the assignment operator. So suppose in x I want to assign the value of 5. So what I will do less than dash 5. Now when I run this to see what will happen when I run this control enter you can see the global environment window and the global environment window what we see x and now we see a 5. So basically, we were discussing about this yesterday, in the global environment window, you will get all the variables or all the objects. What are objects? We will learn about objects in next class. So these are variables in which we have assigned the value of 5. Okay. So you can find all the variables, all the objects in the global environment. Significance on its own. 
the value which is assigned to x is actually of the significance. So if we change the value of x, it will keep on changing. Right? Here. Now if I want to remove this x, I will use the function rm. I will use the function rmx and this will remove the function. This will remove the variables of the global environment. Here, here, another way of doing it, see, to see, so again I am just taking x, maybe 7. Another way is here, you can see your posting, you can just simply click on this and it will ask you, you want to remove this, yes, what? Right, so you can use this, boom, say over here. Here, here. So now what are the different functions which we can use? to understand that what type of variable this x is. So again I will just run this x. Now the functions are type of just write the function with the function name and within the brackets you have to give the inputs. Now here in the help tab in the help tab if you just search for um, if you just type type of which is the name of the function if you just write type of over here, I think it's very small if you go on. Writing capital N after any number denotes that you want to store it 
as an integer. Clear? Now if you run this, type y and run this, we are getting a 7. The only difference is that here we can see 7 L. On the console we are getting 7, right? When you are typing y and hitting enter on the console you are getting 7. Here you are getting 7 L. So now let us check what? Type of what? Type of y. Type of y is You can check the class of y which will give you numerical. Which will give you numerical. Is it clear to you anyone who has any doubt just can raise their hands and ask. What is Because after you have to be gap here, but don't give any gaps in between. You cannot put a you cannot cannot put a gap over here. It should be as it is, just like this. Just run that again without the gap. Just run that again. You don't select and run. You just keep your cursor here and hit run. That's it. Give me A as a numeric or as a double. Here. 
Alright, okay, this is L1. You cannot write 1L because you cannot start any variable name with a number. So L1. L1, I am writing true. In caps lock, I am writing true. So why in caps lock? Remember this very carefully. There is something called as reserved strings. There is something called as reserved strings in R programming. These reserved strings are true, false and n. What do you mean by reserved strings? These are some values or variables which are predefined in R. So for example, if you want to assign any value to true, you can assign a value to true, but it is not something which we shouldn't do. True, capital, true, capital, false, capital, any. These are all logical variables. Right? These are all logical strings. These are reserved strings. We generally never write anything or we generally never use these words as variables. So here when I am assigning true to L1. And when I run this, you can see over here, just see over here please, L1 you are getting true and when you check the type, when you check the type of L1, so L1 is the variable which contains the value true. And when I run this, what is the answer? Logical. Here, what is the answer? Logical. So basically true, false and a. These are reserved strings. These are logical values. These are logical values. So when I am assigning true uh, to L1, you can see true is written in blue, color blue. Here these numbers are written in color blue. Can you see this? The numbers are written similarly. True is also a value, right, which I am assigning on L1. So when I am running type of L1, you are getting the answer as logical. Because now it is a logical variable which contains the value true. Here which contains the value true. Similarly, you can use false. Make sure you write capital false. Everything in caps. If it is small letters, then it will be taken as a normal word. It will not be taken as a logical string. Clear? Clear? Similarly, we can also have, for example, L2. We can also assign to L2 NA. So when I write NA, can you see it's in blue? All these things are in black. All these things are in black. Any value, any number is generally denoted in blue. Right? So this is a value or a number. This is denoted in blue. All the strings, all the text are denoted in black. Right? So when I run this and when I then change, check the type of L2, it will give me logic. It will give me logic. So now, what are these reserved strings that are we talking about? What is the significance? Just see once and then you want to do. What is the significance of these logical or reserved strings that we are using? Suppose now in true, I want to assign the value as 7. Alright, I want to assign the value 7 to the word 2. 2 can be taken as a word, right? it's a word, it's a word, it should be taken as a word, just like complex, it should be taken as a word, but can you see true is a blue, so it's not taken as a word. If I run this, you will get an error. What it is saying that error is, error in true, error in this particular entire code, invalid left hand side assignment. So left hand side of the assignment invalid. You cannot assign. True is already a value. You cannot assign a value to another one. Right? So these are known as reserved strings. True, false, any. You cannot assign any values to these reserved strings. Is it clear, Rishi? Archie, I will not explain that right now. We will discuss that later. Null and any we will discuss in some other 
See, now when as and when we are moving ahead to perform one single task in, in our programming, you have 10 different ways of doing it, right? So if you are using one particular method and you are getting the answer, then it's not wrong. It's completely fine. In our programming, you will have multiple ways of solving one particular question. So you have to be very confident on yourself that if you are getting the correct answer then the, the method is also correct. The method is not wrong. Unless and until you are getting the correct answer, the method can never be wrong. Alright, this is one thing. Second thing you have to keep in mind that there are multiple things in our programming, multiple ways. So here I have taken true, you can write false and check. So all these different things you can do back and forth. Right? Because obviously we cannot practice everything in class, there are some things which you can try. So first I will suggest all of you to try. If you are getting any error, if you are facing any difficulty, then you should ask. Right? Straight away don't ask me to do it in class. First you have to try back at home. And you try it on your own. Suppose the question is coming to your mind, let's try this with false. So just try it. If you are getting any error, then you can ask. Right? Okay. So this, these are reserved strings which you cannot, you know, but when you write capital T, this generally capital T we'll be using within the functions later on. So capital T is again, you can see is in blue, right? So when I assign any value to this, this will be simply taken, this will be simply taken as a variable. This is simply taken as a variable, but it is not suggested, it is not suggested to use T or capital F. Why not? Because later on when we move ahead, when, our, when we are writing different functions, within the functions we have different inputs. Here this is a function. We just have one input within this function. In some functions we will be having more than one inputs, right? We will be having six, seven inputs. So one of the inputs is whether it will be false or true, something like that. Then in those functions we will be using capital T, capital F. So it's not desirable that you are using capital T or capital F to store any values. You have to keep this, these things in mind because what happens especially in exams is that you store some values in capital T, capital F. Later on you are performing any functions and you are using capital T, capital F and the answer is not coming. Because somewhere or the other you have stored some numbers which is wrong. Clear? Clear? So you will not get any error. There is no error that we are getting. But it's not desirable. But it is not desirable. Okay. Now the next thing. Suppose when we are talking about logical strings and logical uh, variables. For example, here in, let me take another. Uh, variable as L3. Okay. Let me take, so I, I, what I will do is I will remove this T, R and T. I will remove this T. So now this T is gone from the number. So now in L3, in L3 I want to put C5 greater than 7. 5 greater than 7. This is what? This is false. So in L3 basically what am I, what am I assigning? False. See? False. False. Cure? Cure? Everyone is it cure? Any doubts still cure? Any doubts still cure? Any doubt? Alright. Now the next thing that we we'll move is the character variables. Character variables. Now what is character variables? Here all these are numbers, logical strings, we have done complex numbers, integer, double. Now character variables. For example, I want to store my name Shiva. Right? Now this, just see one thing. Just see one thing over here. This is a variable. Assignment operator. And now this is the value which I want to assign within this particular variable. This is the value, Shivangi, which I want to assign to B. 
A. Clear? Clear? Now we need write this. Object Shivangi not form. Why? Because when you are writing any word with that. Object Shivangi not form. Why? Because when you are not using any word with that. So when you are not using any word with that. Basically, whenever you are writing any word without any quotes, it will be taken as an object. What is object? It's a variable, right? So here, Shivangi is not an object. It's a it's a constant. It's a value which I want to put within name, right? So what I will do is I will put this within quotes. I will put this within quotes. And when I put this within quotes, this will be taken as a value. Now this is green in color. This is taken as a value. The difference. So this is the default theme. You can change the theme of our programming by just going to tools. Just see everyone tools, global options. Here we have appearance, and you can change the theme here. I am not changing. I want to keep the default theme, and I think this way, right? So when I have the default theme. Values which are in blue are generally numbers, complex numbers, logical operators, logical values. Right? All the black things are objects, functions. All the things in green are characters. This light green is your comment. Acha. So here I will. Uh, I forgot to explain this particular portion to all of you. So here when I am using any hashtag and I am typing anything. And if you run this, suppose I am selecting this entire command and I am running this. This is just a comment. What is a comment? This is a non-executable function, a non-executable command. These are just commands. Whenever you put put a hashtag in front of any function or something, and when you run that line, it will not get executed. You will just see the command prompt. You will not see any output for this. You will not see any output for this. For example, for example, just see. For example, if you write nine plus eight, right? This is nine. See, this is nine plus eight. <coughs> simply nine plus eight. Simply nine plus eight. When I run this, I get the answer seventy. But when I put a hashtag over here, you can use multiple hashtags also. When when you put a hashtag over here and you run this, and you run this, nothing appears. Nothing appears. Why? Just the code. You will not get the output because putting a hashtag in front of any function or any command of line changes it into comment, and comment are non-executable. Here, here. This is how. Now in exam also, this is a very good practice that we always keep on writing these kinds of comment. As what I am doing, see no error, but it is not desired. So this is a comment. So when I run this entire code of line, just see when I am putting my cursor over here and I am running this particular line. This code, this line is also running, but it is not getting executed. Right? This is just there for understanding purposes. You will see this in all the programming languages. In Excel also we have those comments where we have those flags, right? So those are also comments. So these are non-executable. Generally, why do we Have these comments so that, for example, I have written a code of line. I am sharing it with any one of you. So for your understanding, when you are reading my code, you will understand. Okay, this is there is no error in this, but it is suggesting that we should not use P as a variable. Right? That is why we use comments. Clear? Clear to everyone? Why we use hashtags? So here, when I run this, now here when I run this line, now when I run this line, you will see name Shivan. So now let's check the type of name. This will give me character. So this is a character variable. Character variable. Here, here. You can also check the class. I class. Okay, correct. Here, so we have done numeric, complex, logical, and character variables. 
Now, is this clear? Is this clear to everyone? All right. Now, for example, I am writing H and suppose I am putting in 24 within the quotes. Within the quotes I am putting 24. 24 is a number. 24 is a number. But I am putting it within the quotes. The moment I use quote, see what will happen. Here we have H. 24 within the quotes. Now let us check the type of H. We are getting a character. Although 24 is a number, but whenever I am using a quotation quotes outside of a number, it will be stored as a character. So whenever you want to store any character variable or any character value, you will store it within quotes. Here, here you can also store any complex number, any logical number into quotes. So uh, <coughs> let me take it as uh, C. For example, I am uh, let me store gender or let me take this as female and here within brackets, within quotes I am typing true. So true just true is a logical fact but I am putting it within quotes. So here it will be taken as a what? Character. Character. Very good. Character. So what do we conclude? That all, all numeric, logical, even complex variables can be stored as a character. All numeric complex logical variables can be stored as a character variable. But, but vice versa is not. We cannot store a character variable. I told you, we cannot store the character variable as a numeric or a complex or a logical value. Aram se nebhi tu chayega.
can I convert just see as dot numeric? Can I convert name? What is name, Shwami? Can I convert this into numeric? You will get error. Any. It's not applicable. How can you convert the name into numeric? Not possible. Right? But if I want to convert as dot logical, I want to convert. I want to convert female. What is female? True. I want to convert this true into logical. Can I do that? Yes. You can just get without the quotes. So here I will write female one. Just run this and see female one is true without the quotes. Just see one thing please. See one thing. If I write as dot numeric, if I write as dot numeric, and I write cap true within quotes, can we convert this into numeric? Let's see. Zero or not? This is a cat. This is a character family. It can be anything, right? So it cannot be converted into numeric. Although here, when you are converting into logical, it just removes the quotes and it checks yes, we converted. But see this thing as dot numeric. This true is what? This true is a logical value. This true is a logical value. I can convert this into numeric. You will get the answer as well. Logical can be converted into numbers. It is not confusing, it is simple. You just have to give it some time and then you will be accustomed. If we do as a logical to no, Narayan Dauti, no. Because it has no meaning. True within, it, it does not mean that our programming is not so much efficient that it will understand what is going in your brain. It understands what goes into brain, what goes inside brain of normal people. Right? So it will not convert into capital. Why are we getting one at any? So by default, true is stored as one. False, capital false is stored as zero. This is the general thing that we see in all the uh, programming also see this in Excel. So here when I am writing as or numeric false you will get C. So basically true and false is taken as 1 and 0. Now you will say that, that let me convert as or logical 1. I should get true if you are converting true into logical if you are converting true into numeric, you are getting 1. 1 is a number. When we convert this into logical, we should get true. Yes, we
Yes.
Sorry. Can I type C? इसमें लगा दो। इसमें नहीं ऊपर लगा दो। हाँ लोग करे। नहीं नहीं। सिंगल लगा दो। पीछे से करते हैं बेड को। ऊपर लगा दो। सिंगल लगा दो। ऊपर लगा दो। नीचे।
some functions so we can calculate some of the different variables to get us like right x y z just give comma comma you can just write this right now a number of variables and we get the answer simple now another thing we should have also done is x plus y to the use of plus sign or in the sum function itself we could have written 5 comma 7 comma uh, 9 as well so all of these different things are also possible we can take out maximum minimum right so you can take out maximum minimum of different variables again the same logic you can also take out minimum now in minimum i can straight away write 5 7 and 9 and i can get the answer here another function is log right so, so, so suppose if i am writing log 5 this will give me 1.60 so if you all have calculator with you you all can check the value of log check the value of log this is generally by default log with base e so it's a natural log you use ln right you use ln this is that log just simply writing log and the value will give you the logarithmic value of base e or the natural log now suppose i want log 5 base 10 so for that what are we going to do we write the log function only now search in the help tab search in the whatever function you come across in our programming you can simply search it in excel or in our programming in the help tab so here when i type l uh, log what do we see what do we see we have log here we have x x is a number x is a number any number you put in and here we have base equal to exp1 so by default the base is taken as exp1 exp1 is exponential so by default the base is taken as e so here i just wrote log 5 i did not mention the base so by default the base is taken as exp1 exp1 exp is again a function for exponential for example if i am writing exp 10 this is e to the power 10 that what i am getting the answer for so exp 1 is basically e now here if i want to take out log 5 base 10 so i will write log 5 base equal to 10 and i will get the answer here or what else we can do or what else we can do is log 5 comma 10 simply without so basically just see these are known as arguments or the inputs these are known as arguments or the inputs for which you give a particular value here this is an argument by default the value is exp so if you don't mention any value by default it will be taken as base e if you mention a value 10 it will be taken as base 10 if you mention 2 base 2 5 base 5 okay. <coughs> this is exp function which is e raised to the power of similarly similarly we can also have mean now the only difference in mean if i write x comma y just like it for some function we can get the answer now if i see x and y x and y is 7 and 5 what is the mean for 7 and 5? 6 but the answer is 5 so we are getting a wrong answer why are we getting the wrong answer? check the function mean mm. check the function mean in mean you can just give one object of one numerical object so that object is x over here so it has just taken that x and given you the answer. It is not checking for y. It is not checking for y. So for that, in this case, in the next class, we will be learning something called as vectors. Right? And this, then we get the correct answer. So I will just give this particular portion. Now we also have square root. Square root of x gives me 2 by 2. x was 5. So square root of 5 is 2 by 2. We can also use round function, round x. Right? You have to mention the number of digits. How many decimal places do you want after the dot? Right? How many digits do you want after the decimal? 
case. So here my x is already uh, 5.0. So let me take another number over here. 17.8977. So I want to make it one measure. So we get 17.9. By default, if you check the round function in the help tab, by default, if you check the round function in the help tab, it is by default taken as C. The digits are by default taken as what? C. So if you don't mention anything within digits, you will get 0 as Similar to now, we have ceiling. Ceiling 17.8977 and you run this. You get the answer as 80. So ceiling is moving to the next decimal or moving to the next integer. Right? Similarly, floor is moving to the lower We also have function trunk. Trunk is to trunk is to remove all decimal places. Just remove all decimal places. Whatever it is, just remove all the decimal places. Suppose you want to calculate two factorial, five factorial. For that, you write the function factorial. Eight. This is eight factorial. Suppose you want to last function for today, 10C2, 10C2, so 10, 2, 2. Yes, uh, Narayan, tell me, if we want to check, uh, sorry I did not get on the
Thank you.